Say hi to your neighbor. Tell them Wawire says hi. Amejibu. Ah, good, good. So, we'll be sharing on a topic, reintroductions. Reintroductions. Uh, and before we continue, let me also introduce myself. Uh, I serve in the protocol team. What wangu wa protocol muko? I also belong to a cell. Praise the Lord. My cell is called Lighthouse. Kuna members wangu pia wako hapa. You can see them. I also belong to Bethel Zone. My people are also here. And I also belong to the SOL faculty. Where are my people? Where is Simon, my boss? Yamune? Is he? He's there. Yes. He, he said I, I, I say Yamune, so I don't know what it means. I hope I've said a good thing. So, we go to the word of God. And uh, we, shall look, we shall be looking at four characters in God's word. And the first person we look at is Jacob. Do we know Jacob? I want to introduce to you Jacob. Jacob was the son of Isaac, right? The grandson of Abraham. Praise God. We said we are talking about reintroductions. We are talking about reintroductions. So there are things uh, we need to, to learn about uh, Jacob. And one of the things uh, he's famously known, one, he stole his brother's birthright. It's not a good thing, right? Another thing, he lied to his father. The third thing, he was a crooked man. If you can understand, right? And we go to the Bible, uh, the book of Genesis, 27, Genesis 27, from uh, verse 21 to 24. Media team, uh, if you can project it for us. Then Isaac said to Jacob, come closer so, that, uh, so I can touch you and make sure that you are really, you are really, you, you really are a soul. So Jacob went closer. Mnafuatili your story. Let's, let's uh, start 21. So Jacob, uh, then Isaac said to who? Jacob, come closer so I can touch you and make sure you are really Esau. So Jacob went closer to his father and Isaac touched him. The voice is Jacob's, but the hands are Esau's, Isaac said. Uh, let's continue. But he did not recognize Jacob because Jacob's hands felt hairy, just like Esau's. So Isaac prepared to bless. 24. But are you really my son, Esau? He asked. Yes, I am. Who replied? Tunafatilia. You see, this is another person, Sindio. And he's an assembly deal. You imagine. Can you imagine you lying to your father? Your father asking you, Are you David? And then you are not David, you are saying, Yes, I am. And because he's an old man, he cannot see. He he believes. And there goes the three characteristics of Jacob that we are talking about. What did he do? He stole his brother's birthright. He was a crooked man. He lied to his own father. Praise God. Growing up, uh, my dad always told us three things. That he didn't like a thief, a person who drinks, and a person who lies. So he, if, if Jacob was my father's son, uh, he would not qualify. But thank God. Praise God. So, uh, there's something we learned in Kiswahili called Puagu Anapata. 
So also, when it reached time to marry, say time to marry, of which we are heading there. I'm heading there. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> he was also shortchanged. The same way he was lying to his father, his father-in-law also lied to him. Praise God. He was given Leah instead of Rachel. Praise God. Whatever you plant, you shall also reap, right? But that's not uh, all that happened to him. There's a beautiful thing that happened to him. Jacob met with God. Praise God. Jacob met with God. He encountered God. And that is where his story changed. Praise God. And we, we, we read that in the book of Genesis 32, 30. Genesis 32, 30. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God, God face to face, yet my life has been spared. So this was the turning point of Jacob. When he met God, his life changed. Praise God. When we meet God, our life changes. Praise God. That we, we have different things we've done in our lives. Some of those things we are not proud of. But we, when we meet God, praise God. Tell your neighbor, when you meet God, things change. And that is why we need reintroductions. Remember we had said, wash, wash, But when he meets God, things change. Praise the Lord. His life is transformed and he's never the same. Uh, and then it happens that God ministers to him. He had run away because he had shortchanged his brother. And he was running away for his life. Praise God. And he has gone outside there and life has not been easy. He has struggled. He has also been shortchanged. But God, God reaches out to him again. Praise God. God is a God of other chances. God reaches out to him. He tells him, Jacob, I want you to go back to your people. Praise God. And you know, when he left home, his brother, whom he stole his birthright, he was not in good terms with him. Praise God. Because he was running away. When you run away, if someone tells you to go back, then nothing has changed, right? You stole, you stole, right? You lied to your father, your own father. You imagine how the neighbors will be saying, Huyu kijana ali danganya baba yake anarudi. So it was not an interesting thing to go back home. Praise God. But because he had, he had encountered God, and God had spoken to him, akamwambia wewe rudi nyumbani. Praise God. And the good thing is that uh, God continued to walk with him. God had worked on him. And when he, he's going back home, God has assured him, go back. Your brother will not do anything bad to you. So he had to take God at his word. But still, he had plan A, B, and C, just in case Kiumane. Praise God. So he, he divided uh, his entourage that he didn't just want to go and be ambushed. So he put, there's a group he put in front, there's another one. So before Mfikie, alikuwa mejua hapa katikati atakuwa mejaribu kusave his face. Praise God. So, uh, when he meets, he finally meets his brother, he finds out that the brother was not waiting with a gun to shoot him. Praise God. So also God was working on his brother. Praise God. It's amazing how God works in our lives. That mungu anakushugulikia wewe. Na pia wale watu wengine, mungu anawashugulikia. Praise God. That he's always attending unto our needs. And there's a beautiful thing that uh, happened. We remember uh, Jacob being asked, are you Esau? And they say, yes, yes. Right? But something happens here uh, that is in the book of uh, Genesis 33. 
Genesis 33, 9 to 10, media team. My brother, I have plenty. Esau answered, keep what you have for yourself. But Jacob insisted, no, I have found favor with you. Please accept this gift from me. And what a relief to see your friendly smile. What a relief to see your friendly smile. It is like seeing the face of... Praise God. This is someone he took advantage of. But when he meets God, he sees him as his brother. He sees his smile is beautiful. How could I be a competitor again? Praise God. So that when we meet God, our lives are transformed. And this is uh, Jacob speaking of his brother. And also another thing about uh, his brother Esau is that you remember what he said in uh, verse 9? Let's look at verse 9. My brother, I have plenty. Praise God. That his brother also had plenty. God has blessed, had blessed both of them. Praise God. So that the brother was not waiting to be bribed to offer forgiveness. No. Praise God. That God still blessed both of them. So when, when we encounter God, he works on us and he continues to minister to us uh, in things that we, we, we are struggling with. And God transformed uh, the life of Jacob and he renamed him. He's, he, he called him a new name. What's the new name? Israel, right? So that's one of the reintroductions. From the con man, from the mtuawoshwosh, to Israel, a nation that God loves. Praise God. And uh, we continue. The next person we are looking at is Moses. Moses, uh, the story of Moses is found in uh, Exodus 2, uh, 11 and 12. Many years later when Moses had, uh, had grown up, he went out to visit his own people, the Hebrews. He saw how hard they were forced to work. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. After looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid the body in the sand. So we are being introduced to Moses, right? And in that introduction, Moses was a murderer, right? He killed someone. And then uh, Exodus, we also look at Exodus 4.10. Exodus 4.10. But Moses pleaded with the Lord. Oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been, and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. So Moses had another weakness. He had a speech impediment. Praise God. So he was a murderer and he had a speech impediment. Praise God. That's the first introduction. And he, he tells God, but I, I think I'm not able to do this thing. But do you know God knew Moses before he was born? Praise God. You know Moses is one of those people that the mom took care of him na akalipwa. Wewe mama yako amewahi lipwa kukulea? Umezaa mtoto na unalipwa kumlea. Wewe ndio wewe ndio mtu wa kazi na wewe ndio mama ya mtoto and you are being paid by another person to take care of your own child. That's how God works. Praise God. So Moses was taken care of by uh, his mother and he was paid by another person. Praise God. So God knew Moses before he was born. And God is here calling Moses, giving him a task to do. But Moses is there giving excuses. And I'm going to say, 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 and God is telling him, Nani anapeanga mtu mdomo? Praise God. That 
when God calls us, when God is giving us an assignment, it is us to know that if we fellowship with him, he will give us the ability to do that which he has entrusted us to do. And uh, Moses is one of those people in the Bible that was given very huge, huge, huge tasks by God. Praise God. He led the children of Israel from captivity to the promised land. And uh, one of those things, uh, when Moses was dying, Deuteronomy uh, 34.5, it says, So, Moses, the servant of the Lord. We shall look at just part, the first part. Moses, the servant of the Lord. Praise God. When the Bible mentions something and describes, when the Bible says, Moses, the servant of the Lord. The servant of the... At, at other places, it has said, Moses, the man of God. That is the Bible saying. Praise God. Those are not your Facebook followers or Instagram followers calling you the man of God. That is God's word saying he was the man of God. Praise God. That is the introduction of Moses. He was a man of God. He led God's people. And uh, as I was studying God's word, uh, I, I come to realize there's that point. Of course, he was not perfect. There are things he did that were not so good. But, you know, God loved him. God used him for his glory. And uh, Moses, one of the things, he, when he was told by God that uh, he will not enter the promised land, but God showed him. Alimpeleka kamonyesha view vizuri, ndiyo hapa, ndiyo hapa. He's one of those people who had the privilege of previewing the place they were going. And God had told him how to end up. But I love how Moses responded. Moses was not like us. Mungu sasa mimi, mimi ndiyo ni mewaongoza, mimi ni singe. No. Moses has a hard, hard, had that heart for people. He was saying, Lord, if I find favor with you, choose someone who will lead these people. He was so interested because of the next generation. Praise God. He wanted someone who will lead God's people into the promised land. Who will remind people to always serve God. That is what he was focused. He wasn't selfish. If it was us, tungekua tunasema mapema ndiyo best. Mimi ndiyo nitaingia wakwanza, nyinyi mungoje hapo. But Moses was so concerned about God's people. Praise God. Uh, and if we can learn from Moses, there are those challenges he had. The first introduction was not a pleasant one, right? But in the reintroductions, he's called a man of God, a servant of the Lord. You know what the Bible mentions? Moses was a servant of the Lord. That's final. Praise God. I've always come to realize that when the Bible of, uh, or God's word says something was so, if the Bible says she was beautiful, my friend, that person was beautiful. You cannot, because it was written in the Bible. There were other things to be written, but if that was important, then it was a fact. Right? So if God's word says something about you, if it says you are blessed, then that is it. Praise God. It doesn't matter what social media people are saying, what other people around you are saying. If you are blessed, you are blessed. It's final. Then we go to the next person. There's Rehab. The former prostitute. Praise God. And all of us know there is maybe a famous street in Nairobi that is known for those. When you just mention it, people know. So Rehab was one of those. It's, it's not a pleasant thing. It's not a good introduction, right? That nobody will want to be introduced, even that that's what they do. That was Rehab. But when the spies came to her, she didn't start that introduction. But God used her to save his people, to preserve their lives, to give them information. But in exchange, she was, her life was also spared. And uh, one of the things, uh, when I started uh, reading the Bible, I didn't know why uh, 
You know, when you're starting to read the book of, let's say, Matthew, it does not just go straight to Jesus. It says, so and so begat so and so. So I was wondering, now how do I get Rema there? Maybe I'm discouraged, I'm going to read the book of Matthew, and I find so and so begot so and so. So I'm wondering, now, is this helpful to me? But when I started studying God's word intentionally, then I found out it was important. Praise God. It was important for us to know. Like the, uh, the bishop from Zambia always says, this is the tea. This is the tea. So this, this Rahab, <laughs> this Rahab, she's in the genealogy of Jesus. She was a prostitute, but she's there. She's there. Praise God. So, and uh, one of the examples, if, if uh, to, to, to come back to us here, we were in Shiloh on Friday, and after, after the service, as the service was concluding, uh, Bishop's granddaughter, Anaitwa Kimberly, Kimberly was, <laughs> came where Bishop was, and you know, she, she came, and she was playing with the phone, and then finally she sat on the seat that Bishop was sitting on. Then, when Bishop was going to sit, he realized the seat <laughs> has already been occupied. And who is occupying it? It's Kimberly, <laughs> right? If it was me, maybe I would be told by the protocol team you have to move. But who is it? Kimberly, right? When you go to that genealogy, Kimberly is the daughter of Nyambura, right? <laughs> Nyambura is the daughter of Bishop. So Kimberly knows her place. <laughs> Praise God. So we also ought to know our place in God. Praise the Lord. When we know our place in God, nobody can uh, mess around with us. Praise the Lord. So uh, that's found in Matthew 1.5, that Rahab was uh, in the genealogy of uh, Jesus Christ. If you can give us Matthew 1.5. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Right? It's there. It's there. That's the reintroduction. You can't take away. You can't take it away from God's word. Praise God. So she was not a prostitute anymore. There's a reintroduction that happened to her life. Praise the Lord. And then the, uh, the fourth person we are looking at is the woman of faith in Mark 5. Praise the Lord. The Bible doesn't give us her name. But the beautiful thing is the Bible does it intentionally. Because at times we think, lazima tukwe na julikana. Mimi na julikana kwa hii kanisa. At times if God wants to meet you, zi lazima ukwe na julikana. Praise God. Praise the Lord. If the Lord knows you, si lazima ukwe na julikana. That's why that woman's name is not mentioned anywhere. Because Jesus had not met her earlier. She didn't book an appointment. Nobody knew her, even the disciples. In fact, when Jesus asked, who has touched me? The disciples are like, Sasa. But there was that different connection she had. It's found in Mark 5, 24 to 33. Jesus went with him. And all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out of from him, so he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look, this crowd is pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. 
Then the frightened woman, the what? The frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him uh, what she had done. Praise the Lord. She had no appointment, but because of her faith, she had an issue of blood. That is maybe what she has been known about. Ule, manamke, ule, ule. Twelve years. But when she came to Christ, she touched the hem of his garment. A reintroduction happened. Praise the Lord. Praise God. That her faith has made her well. That makes her a woman of faith. Praise God. It's not that woman with the issue of bleeding. Her introduction changes. She's a woman of faith. Praise the Lord. So, as you look at your life, praise the Lord. You have used intentionally two male and two ladies in this sermon. So that, Huta Sema, Mimi, I'm, I'm just a woman. Or I'm just a, a mere man. I've used these examples intentionally so that we know that all of us are partakers of this. Praise the Lord. That when you encounter the Lord, it doesn't matter who you are. He transforms you. He changes you. He gives you a new name. Praise the Lord. And uh, just another mention, uh, there's a story of Paul who was transformed from Saul. He was there persecuting Christians. But when he met the Lord, he changed. Praise God. With that zeal he used to persecute Christians, he used the same zeal to, uh, to spread the gospel. Praise the Lord. Another person is Peter. Praise the Lord. We all remember Peter. Peter is that person who told Christ, Mimi na kufa na wewe. Praise God. He was so sure, yet he denied Jesus. But when, his, when the Holy Spirit came upon him, he's the same person who stood up and said, we are not drunk. No, we are not drunk. Praise the Lord. He didn't need any, he didn't need to hide. He stood forth. How come I at the end at a spokesperson? No. It's because he encountered God and he could not keep silent about it. So also for us, as we, as we fellowship, as we as we read scripture, as we pray, when we encounter God, our life changes. Praise the Lord. And it doesn't matter where we come from. You can have maybe bad stories like Jacob. Unajulikana wewe ndi udaletanga shida kwa familia. Meeting ya familia ikitua na wewe uko hapo kutakuwa na shida. Inajulikana with everyone. But God can reintroduce you. Praise the Lord. There can be a reintroduction for you. Praise Jesus. That when there's that reintroduction, and we are talking about the restart during the harvest conference, that will be refreshed. Praise the Lord, that will reset. That resetting can only happen when we meet, when we meet Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. When we come to him, when we walk with him, when we know him, there's a song by Christina Shusho called Nataka Nikujue. And in that song, she says, Vile uliponya jana, siyo vile utaponya leo. Praise the Lord. So when we walk with Jesus, he transforms our lives. He reveals unto us how he does things, or how he wants us to, to move. And uh, now we move to us. First Peter 2.9, media team. Now us as, a, as Christians, as children of God, this is now our introduction. Praise God. But you are not like that. For you are a chosen people. You are a royal, you are a royal priest. A holy nation. God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Praise the Lord. This is now our introduction. Praise God. That wherever you, you live or the people you stay with, this is the kind of introduction that we have. They may want to, to say, Wewe ulikuwa mlevi. No, but you are not like that anymore. Praise the Lord. God has met you. God has encountered you. And your life 
has been preserved. Praise the Lord. So, no matter what we go through, or no matter the situations we have been, God has transformed us. When we encountered him, when Jesus died on the cross, he took away all our sins. Praise God. And now we are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. Whatever else other people think is secondary. But the primary thing is what God says we are. Praise the Lord. So as we, we live, as we serve God, and as we do everything that we are doing, have we identified that there's a reintroduction? There's something happens happened in your life. And you must live with the awareness that this is, this is who you are in God. Because if you don't know who you are, then it, it will be so hard for you. Praise the Lord. The enemy will lie to you. But when you understand who you are, there is nothing that the enemy will come and tell you. The devil will not tell you anything. Praise God. Because you know your identity in God. And how do we come to this reintroduction? You ask. Uh, it's simple. Praise God. Uh, in, in the book of Romans 3.22, media team, Romans 3.22, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone, for everyone who believes no matter who we are. Praise the Lord. This is how we can obtain an introduction, by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And it's for everyone. And then we have Romans 10, 9 to 10. Romans 10. Romans 10, 9 to 10. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 10. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Praise the Lord. Now this is where we are. You can never have an introduction if you never met the Lord. It's only him. It's only him who can transform your life. It's only him who can change your introduction. Praise the Lord. So if you are here and you have never known the Lord, you have never received Christ in your life, you can just lift up your hand so that you, you have this moment of a reintroduction. If you are here and you don't know the Lord, it will be a beautiful thing for you to receive Christ. And we do your introduction here. Anybody, anybody who has never received Christ and would love to receive Jesus. Kama kuna yeyote angetaka kumpokea Yesu katika maisha yake. This is the time. Anybody? Yes, come on. at times people may fear, but if in your heart you're feeling there's that urge, you can see any of the pastors after the service and will be able to lead you to Christ because that's the only way you can achieve or you can have a reintroduction. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Our Father and our dear God, we come before you this morning, oh God. We thank you because of your goodness and your grace. Thank you, Lord, that uh, it is in you, O oh God, that we find a new identity, O oh God. A chosen generation, royal priesthood uh, is achieved, O oh God, only through you. That you died on the cross to save us, O oh God. And I pray, Father, that we may realize what you've done in our, in our lives, O oh God. That we are changed people, O oh God. And Father, that we encounter you, O oh God, that we are never the same, O oh God. Because you minister unto us, you change us, O oh God. You change our thoughts. You change how we do things, O oh God. Because, Father, when you come into us, O oh God, you make us new, O oh God. And that your Holy Spirit dwells in us. 
that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, it lives in us, O oh God. How I pray that we realize we are in you, O oh God. We live, O oh God, into the abundance, O oh God. We live and experience, O oh God, to your fullness, O oh God. And I pray that the people around us, O oh God, that will see your power in us, O oh God, and glorify you. We give you every praise. We give you every honor, O oh God. Thank you for this opportunity, O oh God, to minister uh, your word to your people, O oh God. And I pray, Father, that, Lord, as they go out, O oh God, Father, that they will put into practice that which they have learned, O oh God. Those maybe who have not discovered themselves, O oh God, I pray, Father, as they open scripture, as they read scripture, as they pray, as they fellowship, Father, that you open their eyes, O oh God, that they may realize, O oh God, that you are on their side, O oh God, and they are more than conquerors, O oh God. We give you every praise and we give you every honor. In Jesus' name we pray. 